On this video, we're going to graphically explore our sequences by plotting them in the coordinate plane. So what we're going to do is we're going to consider each term in the sequence as a function of n, where n is the integers and the index of the sequence. So we're going to plot some isolated points. The input value, the x value, is going to be the index number of each term. And then the y value, the output value that we're going to plot, is going to be the value of that term, the sequence term at n. So we'll plot 1, a sub 1, 2, a sub 2, 3, a sub 3, and so forth. That's going to give us a really nice visual sense of what's happening to our sequences as the n value, as the number of terms in the sequence approaches infinity. And why do we want to do that? Well, it's nice to have a visual because we have this definition right here. The limit of a sequence is what we consider to happen as a, to a sub n, to the terms a sub n as n approaches infinity. It's very, very similar to looking at functions, functions of x, f of x, and observing what happens as we take the limit as x approaches infinity. And we're going to go ahead and say that a sequence converges to a limit l if that limit of the terms as n approaches infinity is equal to L. If that limit exists, then we say that the sequence is converging. If not, we are going to say that the sequence is diverging. So if the terms of a sequence approach a finite value, we say that the sequence converges. And plotting the points in the term as I've defined above here gives us a nice visual to look at and to connect back to functions and looking at what happens to functions as x approaches infinity. Okay, so for our first sequence that we want to look at, let's look at the sequence 1 over 2 to the n when we start the index notice here at n equals 0. So there is that slight difference here. Uh, a lot of times we'll start at 1, but here to indicate that we want to start at 0, I wrote n equals 0. And if we write out, because we're going to plot this, so if we write out the first couple of terms in this sequence when n equals 0, we get 1 over 2 to the 0, then 1 over 2 to the first, 1 over 2 squared, 1 over 2 to the third, 1 over 2 to the fourth. That's probably enough to give us a nice little sense and some points to plot when we go to plot them in the coordinate system as ordered pairs. So 1, 1 half, 1 fourth, 1 eighth, 1 over 16, and so forth. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to plot points. And since this is n equals 0, this was n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, and so forth. This is going to be the ordered pair 0, 1, this is going to be the ordered pair. So again, because we started the index at 0, that's why we're starting the ordered pairs with a in, out, an input value of 0 and an output value of 1. Then we've got 1, 1 half, and 2, 1 fourth, and 3, 1 eighth, and 4, 1 sixteenth. Now we're going to plot these, and we're going to use those points to get a sense as to what is happening to the sequence, if it's converging or diverging, if it's converging on a finite value, to make a conjecture. And we'll clean all this language up and have some theorems that allow us to show exactly if a sequence is converging or diverging. But for now, in this intro section, we're just going to make a conjecture. So if I plot 0, 1, that would be this. I'll just write the ordered pair for the first couple. That's 0, 1. And then at 1, we're going to plot... 1 1 half and I think we get the sense at 2 it was 2 1 quarter at 3 1 eighth at 4 1 sixteenth and these are going to get ever more I don't have the values and it's you know I'm getting so close to the axis here it's hard to see but we are essentially getting smaller and smaller and smaller as the n goes to infinity so remember we're going to let n go to infinity and we want to know what is happening here? And if we kind of trace what's happening, if we connect the dots, and as I said in the future section, we're going to be able to connect those dots actually with a function and think about what's happening with that function. But we can see right here that the terms in the sequence are ever decreasing and they are approaching zero. They're getting closer and closer and closer to zero. We've only drawn out, actually, we only plotted out to n equals four. And we only, we, you know, we didn't even draw out. I kind of eyeballed five and six. But we haven't gotten very close to infinity. I mean, you can never get close to infinity. But we're going to continue to let that n grow. And what's going to happen is the denominator is going to grow in each of those terms. And what we would say here, our conjecture would be that this actually converges to zero. That's what I would say here on this one. The conjecture would be that this is converging to zero. We actually have a nice little visual that we could see there. Okay, let's look at another one. Actually, let's look at two more. So let's look at this guy. And again, this one, 
we are given negative one. So this guy has a switching sign, negative one to the nth, three to the n, and or three to the, not three to the n, three times n. And so we are not given where the index starts. So the assumption would be that it's going to start at one. So when n equals one, you know, honestly, if it started at zero, um, it would be kind of silly because then the first term would be zero and we don't need to include that term in our list of terms. But let's write out a few terms. So at one, we start actually at negative three. Then we have positive, the switch is on there. So remember our little definition, we call that the switch that alternates the signs. And we're going to alternate the signs. We're going to be at positive and then it's going to be three Let's write n equals 2 up here. Uh, 3 times 2, so it's going to be positive 6. And then it's going to be negative 9, and then positive 12, and negative 15, and so forth. We can sort of see what's happening with that pattern. Now, if we were to graph that, let me pause the video. And Okay, so let's take a look. Look at what is happening here. And if we keep going, we're going to continue to bop around here. We're bopping up and down above the x-axis, below the x-axis with that ever switching sign. But not only that, if we think about trying to like connect the dots, essentially, if we think about what's happening, let me highlight so we get a visual here. If we try to connect these dots, Look at what is happening and look at the amplitude of my curvature. I'm just going to exaggerate it here. Look at the amplitude of my curvature. As this sequence continues, as n is going to infinity, we're getting oscillation. Now, we can have oscillation and still converge in on one value, but this is oscillating, oscillation of ever increasing magnitude. The size of the oscillation continues to increase as we have at that three times n. The oscillation is coming from the negative one to the nth power and then the magnitude is coming from that three times n. So we have oscillation of ever increasing magnitude here and because of that what we're going to say here is that this guy is diverging. This sequence diverges and it diverges in such a way you know we could add in here because of oscillation that approaches both, right, it's oscillating, but it's approaching both positive and negative infinity as n is increasing. So we would say here that this sequence does not converge. In fact, it diverges. That would be the conjecture here. And more than the conjecture, we can clearly see that this is going to diverge. So let's look at one more. So let's write out a couple of terms on this guy. So if we have negative 1 to the nth, n over n plus 1 squared, let's see. And again, no indication that we're starting at any particular value. So the assumption would be that we're starting at one. We don't want to assume that we're starting at zero because again, that would just give us a term of zero. So we're going to start at one. When we start at one, when we get negative one to the, oh, you know what? I want to switch it just a little bit. Let's make this uh, to the n minus one on the top. I realized in my notes, I did want to switch that. So switch that to n minus one. And then the first term is going to be a positive one over, we're going to get 2 squared. The next term is going to be a negative 2. So again, I'm, I'm plugging these into my head, but let me write out the, the n values up above. How far do we want to go? Four. Let's go five terms. We'll go to five terms. Okay, so we'll plug in the 2. So we get 2 over 3 squared, and then we're going to have a positive 3 over 4 squared, and then we're going to have a 4 over 5 squared, and then we're going to have a 5 over 6 squared. And I lost my alternating signs, so I started looking at the n over n plus 1 squared. But we started with a positive term and then the, the alternating signs. So I missed the term at 4 when we have negative 1 to the third power. That would give us a negative term. And that continues, and we can see the pattern. I'm going to write out the terms with the squares in the bottom. So we've got 1 fourth minus 2 over 9 positive 3 over 16, negative 4 over 25, 5 over 36, and so forth. Now, I'm going to graph these, and we're going to have a visual as well, but let's think about a conjecture here. We've got alternating signs, so we clearly have that switch, and the signs are alternating. So we do have oscillation. That's creating oscillation. That switch right there creates oscillation, right, because we've got positive 
and negatives, the terms are flipping between positives and negatives. But take a look at what is happening to the terms. If we were to plot these terms, and I will do that, if we were to plot these terms, you can see that these terms are actually getting smaller and smaller and smaller. The numerator is growing, but not as fast as the denominator is growing. The denominator is growing at a faster rate. It's n plus 1 squared. So the denominator here is growing at a faster rate than the numerator, and these terms are ultimately, as n is going to infinity, these terms appear to be approaching zero. Now they do oscillate, and I'll graph it so we can see that, they do oscillate, but they appear to be approaching zero. And so if we were to graph it, let me, I'll speed up the video and you can watch and we'll plot all those points, we can see that too. Okay, so we can see that we've plotted some points here, and it was getting really, really small to plot there. Um, I didn't actually think too much about my scale. should have made my scale even bigger so we could get in. But what you can see is happening here is the terms are oscillating. They're going above and below the x-axis, and I'm getting really small there. They're going above and below the x-axis. They're oscillating because of that switch in the sign. But even though that is happening, we are, as, a, as we are approaching infinity, the magnitude of the, the terms, the size, if we took the absolute value, the magnitude approaches zero. So even though we have oscillation, even with that oscillation, it appears that we are getting convergence to zero. So even though we're oscillating, we're not just approaching zero in what we call a monotonic way, you know, just in, just decreasing or increasing towards zero. We're oscillating around zero, both positive and negative, but we're still getting convergence to zero. Okay, um, I wanted to just show you one last thing on this video. I want to show you how we can actually plot sequences in Desmos, which gives us a really quick way, right? It was kind of it's kind of tedious and takes a bit of time to do it by hand, but we can actually plot it in Desmos. We can plot sequences in Desmos. Okay, so here's a little code that I have in Desmos, and I will share this code with you in Canvas. But it's just a little code, and we have, if you notice here, we have the sequence. This was the first sequence we looked at. Uh, we had 1 over 2 to the n. Um, I actually believe we were starting at 0, but I started this one at 1, and I'm not going to switch that on this video. So we were taking that. Notice what we have over here. I have zoomed way, way in. So this is uh, 0.5 right here at the top of the screen, and 1 would be right in here. So I'm trying to get out to 40 or so. I'm going to drag this along. But you're going to watch those points get plotted, and you can see we're getting so, so close to 0. By the time we get to 40, it almost looks like now we could zoom in a bit and it won't be right on the x-axis. It'll be a little bit off. But you can see those terms as we get really, really, really close to, they get very, very close to the x-axis. They are approaching zero, even by 13. I don't even know what my scale is anymore. But even by 13, we're getting so, so close to the x-axis. You know, at some point, the visual off of the x-axis is hard to see. And so you can see, I'll zoom back out again, but you can see all of those points being plotted of all those terms and you can see it decreasing and what we call converging upon the x-axis converging to zero now you can come in here and you can also this is a preview of what we're going to do next you can also graph the function 1 over 2 to the x. And notice here, if we were to take the limit of 1 over 2 to the x power as x approaches infinity, that would connect the dots. Because of course, a sequence is just a list of individual terms. So when we plot them, we're getting a plot of a bunch of dots. We're, you know, we're putting a term at every one of the integers for the index. But if we connect the dots, we can use all of the things we used for functions and limits of functions. We can use all of that tools, all of those tools and techniques for computing limits. If we can connect our sequences to functions, which we can do, it's called connecting the dots. If we can connect the dots like this, we can use our function tools. Okay, just wanted to show you that in Desmos that we can plot uh, quickly in Desmos if we wanted a quick way to plot sequences.